So welcome back. On today's show, A Voice Against Violence, we've been discussing the causes of violence against women. And joining us in the studio is Dr. Sylvia Smith. Hi, Dr. Smith. Hi, hi. How welcome. You? Thank you. Welcome. Glad yeah, to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> One of the underlining um, problems that we see with domestic violence is that women uh, find it hard to open up and uh, step forward to ask for help. So how can we get women to open up and, and seek help when they're being abused? I mean, certainly one of the things that was already mentioned here was the real importance of empathy and being empathetic. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about your own struggles, if someone's quite insensitive and, you know, doesn't necessarily feel as though they, they can kind of hear you, you're not necessarily going to open up to somebody like that. Mm -hmm. You want someone who's empathetic, sympathetic, non-judgmental, um, opening to hear, you know, anything that you have to, to say about your situation. Mm -hmm. So I think that the most important things are empathy and being non-judgmental. That's such an important message for mm -hmm. family members to hear because I imagine that even for them, the shock can be so much, you know, knowing that your, your loved one has gone through such a, a terrible situation yeah. that it can even make it hard to be empathetic because you can end up projecting the anger that you have against the abuser on, on your family member. Like, why didn't you talk up sooner? Yeah, like, so all of that yeah. anger and all yeah. of the yeah. things, the frustrations that you feel mm -hmm. towards the person who's being abused, I mean, not towards the person, but because of what the person has gone through, may end up being projected to that person. So it's a very important yeah. message to mm -hmm. hear. Be empathetic, like deal with your own shock and put it aside and just be there for the person that's talking to you. Deal with their needs, think about their yeah. needs, think yeah, about absolutely. them and what they need. Yeah. I mean, the, the other thing, of course, is that, as you say, it's pretty frustrating for a family member or a friend to see someone they care about go through something like this. Uh, and there are sort of agencies that you can contact mm -hmm. as someone who is witnessing someone else going through that. Mm -hmm. So you have an opportunity then to offload some of that frustration mm -hmm. that you may feel and get some proper guidance okay. as to how mm -hmm. to support that person. That's so important because mm -hmm. your instinct is you want to actually go and do the individual yeah, some damage. Yeah. Well, yes, like you know, you know. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, as you rightly say, it, it, it's really difficult to stand mm -hmm. on the outside and watch that. But mm -hmm. there are agencies that can help you to, to sort of take some of that elsewhere so that you present... The, the poor victim mm -hmm. with a more sort of sympathetic and empathetic. Oh. Uh, mm. Sylvia, that's really, that's really good to know. Um, I mean, what do you think that really holds women into violent relationships? Mm. You know, for example, my relative 10 years, what do you, what do you believe holds them? Well, funnily enough, I have a relative who's also going through something quite similar. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of it is to do with poor self-esteem generally. Uh, which has been impacted upon by the perpetrator yeah. who has ground them down. Yeah. I'm thinking about this, this relative of mine in particular. You know, her partner, he has just systematically yeah. ebbed away at her, her self-esteem and her self-confidence um, and the whole thing around... I mean, you know, the other thing I think that's really important to make, point to make, is not, not all men are like this. Not all men who come across women with caring qualities, mm -hmm. such as what you mentioned earlier, yeah. will take advantage of mm -hmm. it. Of not course all, not, of course not. not. All men are yeah. And not all women are abused. And Absolutely. sometimes and in actual fact it can actually be on reverse. It yes. can be a woman abusing a male. Yeah. Yeah. So although today's programme is not about although that. it's not about <laughs> no, that. No, but no, let's no, remember that. I, I thought about that actually. Let's just remember that. Mm -hmm. But I mean I do think it, it, it's a lot to do with with lack of same self confidence. Perhaps a feeling that oh, if I leave, where am I? Where am I going to go? Mm -hmm. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? Um, because when you think about it, when you're in those kinds of relationships, the 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 man has generally stripped away at most things, mm -hmm. made you isolated. Um, perhaps even takes your 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 money if let's say you're an earner. Mm -hmm. um, all that kind of stuff can if be going children on. Children as well. Well, as a social worker, that's another issue that I suppose we have to talk about because, mm -hmm. unfortunately, uh, or fortunately, if, if children are involved and um, the victim isn't taking it sufficient uh, action, that can have implications for her mm -hmm. and her children. Wow. children. Mm -hmm. That was actually something I wanted to ask you was how does it affect the family? Of course, if it gets to the extent where the children are taken away, we can imagine... 
you know, the effects there. But what, what about in other circumstances? How, how does the victims or the survivors, whichever way you want to see it, what, what is the effect that the abuse will have on the family from well, your it, experience? Well, well, imagine, that's a good question. I mean, imagine as a child witnessing mm. um, abuse. And I'm not even necessarily thinking about severe abuse, severe physical abuse, even emotional abuse, mm. or a bullying father, or you know, one who, who tends to shout and to get his own way. Uh, if you if you experience that as a child, you know that can have Im, uh, implications for your longer term presentation in terms yeah. of your personality. Mm -hmm. You may be someone who I mean I, I, again I know of someone else who who as a child witnessed a lot of um, domestic violence between her parents, and her self esteem is still very impacted upon yeah. by that. I mean, she, she generally makes poor um, relationship choices. Mm -hmm. um, she also feels, uh, I mean, her confidence has been really impacted mm -hmm. on. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, perhaps for boys, it may be that, you know, they feel that that's the only way they can communicate with women, they can in turn become bullies. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's um, interesting you say that, sorry to Chloe, because at the start of the show, we did mention, <clears throat> we were talking a lot about how males can sort of deal with their emotions, etc., in a way that, you know, doesn't lead to being violent in the future. Mm -hmm. So I can imagine being brought up and witnessing an environment like that, mm -hmm. obviously is not helping. Mm -hmm. Even oh, if the parent were thing. to try to verbally instill upon the child how they should treat a woman, being in that environment is almost contradictory. It is indeed. And I mean, think about, I mean, how, how able is a woman who, who is being oppressed and, and victimised, mm -hmm. how able is she to instil, let's say, in her son... Exactly. ..you know, good Precisely. values and respect mm -hmm. for women and, and that mm -hmm. kind of thing? How yeah. able is she? Yeah. Because she's been used as a punch bag, yeah. be it emotionally or physically. Yeah. So it can have tremendous implications. And, mm. um, again, as a social worker, obviously, that's what I would be concerned about, the longer-term impact on children. Exactly. And, sadly, if, if a woman finds herself in a position where she's unable to take, um, you know, action, that's when it becomes, mm. we become quite interventionists. And, you know, sometimes it can also result in children being removed. Because... Um, yeah, sorry. Some, no, no, go on, go on, please. Okay. No, no, I, I, I'm just going to say that because we have the perception that she's unable to protect the children, mm. yeah. she's mm. unable to prioritise the children, although we understand why, but the children obviously will always, always come first. Yes. That's, that's, yeah. that's right. I mean, but is there certain signs that you as a social worker will detect, even if you haven't seen the abuse, that you can detect that this person is going for abuse? Well, no, we're not magicians. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that straight. We're not magicians. However, um, I recall a case I dealt with some years ago where when I visited the home, mm -hmm. the mother would always wait until the, the man left the room, mm -hmm. and then she'd whisper away to me, oh. um, you know, how difficult things were. God, that was such a, a frustrating situation. Mm, but I couldn't be more interventionist because I would be putting her at risk. Mm -hmm. Yes, of course. And the children. So it was a case in that situation where I had to almost collude with her whispering just to hear what her situation was. Mm. And then in time and over time and having formed a relationship with her, you know, I could be more helpful in terms mm -hmm. of referring her to a refuge. And, um, but she, it, as somebody was saying earlier, it was a process. Yeah. Um, and what I had to be doing as a social worker was ensuring that each time I visited that things hadn't actually got worse. Mm -hmm. um, they weren't obviously going to get better, but just ensuring things were not getting worse. Mm -hmm. And then progressively move towards a situation where... We got her to a refuge and got her away from that situation. So it wasn't a quick sweep in and, yeah, and yeah. Yeah. it had to be a process. I'm quite interested to know, um, for example, if you was to um, meet a victim that probably you recognise that this person's definitely been abused. You know, you're seeing bruises and, you know, the, the signs are there. It's probably most definite that this person has been abused. But the person will not admit they will not come to terms with it. They will not disclose. How would you deal with a situation like that? Well, I mean, as a social worker, obviously, there probably wouldn't be much we could do. Mm -hmm. mm. However, is, mm. we're talking about possibly being a friend, 
of that person mm -hmm. or a relative of that person. Mm -hmm. I think those people have more of an opportunity to help. Yeah. Yeah. As a social yeah. worker, obviously I'll ha I have a definite remit yeah. to go yeah. in there, see if their children are safe mm -hmm. uh, and if there are children. Um, but if there are no children and it's a question of the woman who is clearly being abused, all you can do is, is, is so, give so advice. So an authority would not be able to like press charges unless they had... The disclosure. A disclosure yes. from, yes. from the client. Yes, from because, the it, client. Yes, because mm -hmm. it is a crime. Mm -hmm. and because it is a crime. Yeah, the yes, police should actually respond appropriately to that. We can't prosecute people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we can encourage someone mm -hmm, to take this to mm -hmm. the police and hopefully... They will, they will it really does highlight so many dimensions. Yeah. When I think about abuse, I don't think it's something that's so straightforward or this is it because she's like that. There's so many dimensions here. I mean, I can imagine a mother in that situation, she really wants help, but at the same time, the fear of telling the truth lest her children are taken away. Mm. So do you tolerate the abuse that you're going through for the sake of keeping your child? Keeping you know, I can imagine all manner of ideas yeah. well, well, running that, 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 would, that, that probably is not real but mm. it's what she fantasizes exactly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and it would be the job of a helping individual such as a social worker or a counselor or whatever well a social worker really um and possibly the police yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to say to that person look if you take appropriate action no one's going to take your children away yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's good um, we're, we're there to protect you absolutely. yeah absolutely absolutely and i think it's important it, as the friend of somebody who's going through that form of abuse to keep the communication o open, even yes. though you, you yes. hate what's happening to them and it's going against everything that's inside of you, but you still have to be that friend, be there talking to them, listening to them, and bit by bit, as you, as you did with that lady, getting them to a place where they feel confident enough mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to move on and take that step of going to a refuge or contacting the authorities and taking that step to leave that relationship. I mean, I think the important thing in, 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 in this scenario where you're a friend or a relative is, is to really stay with it mm. because that is the biggest challenge. I yeah, think. yeah, I think so. I think and that so. is the biggest challenge. And I mean, you know, I'm not know immune so. <laughs> to, to feeling the same way as everybody else. Mm. Um, my instinct is to want to go and do this other individual mm. some harm. <laughs> However, um, it, 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 it's more about trying to leave the door open. I mean, I don't yeah. know if any of you listened to the recent Archers thing that was going on. I don't know if anybody listens to Archers, perhaps you're a little bit too young. Um, <laughs> but anyway, there, there was a, a recent story where yeah. there was a woman who was being uh, physically abused mm -hmm. uh, by her husband. And I mean, that was so difficult to listen to. And I'm thinking that's how it feels as mm -hmm. someone on the outside looking in. It's mm -hmm. so difficult to hear. And when, it, when it's someone you care about, mm -hmm. that must be so, oh, so difficult. Yes. 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 But, and, and the thing is, I, I've seen families where relatives have said, oh, I'm, you know, I've done as much as I can do. She's not taking any uh, action. I give up. And that's the worst thing to do. This yeah. is what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. we have to make uh, the person the priority. So in your mind, uh, don't, don't keep focusing on your own internal struggles. Make the person priority. What's good for this person? So I'm going to stick with it until uh, I'm going to stick with this person until she's free of this relationship. And whatever she needs from me, I will be able to give to them. Thank you so much yeah. for the advice, Dr. Yeah. So yeah. 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 It's been you. a pleasure having you. You've definitely imparted some very important important information mm. so we're going to take a short break but don't go away as we'll be back with more on a voice against violence and find out esther's makeover i'm so curious to see how she looks